All right, this is our second video from 4.2a. We just got done talking about negative exponents. We're going to do our last example here and talk about what I call reciprocals. If I have a quantity and it is a division problem and that whole uh, fraction is raised to a negative exponent, let's talk about what that means and maybe how we can make it positive um, in the end. And so if I have this negative 5 exponent, we've talked about raising a quotient to an exponent before, where we take this negative 5 and we have to make sure that we distribute it to every base in the numerator and every base in the denominator, right? And so you might have done that, s to the negative 5 over t to the negative 5. And then we can talk about making them positive by moving one to the top, by moving the other one to the bottom, and moving the t up to the top, making it t to the fifth, moving the s to the bottom and making it s to the fifth. And if both of them are raised to the same power, they're both raised to the fifth power, what I could do is I can kind of group them together and say that I have a t over s all raised to the fifth, because it doesn't, doesn't that mean the same thing? And so if I look at my starting problem versus where I ended, what is different? Well, it looks like my 5 has changed to positive, which is what I really wanted, right? I wanted to change my negative exponent to positive. How has that changed the bases? Well, it looks like it's just flipped them, right? And so that's kind of our next rule. If I have a quotient, or anything really, a quantity raised to the negative exponent, I can reciprocate it, flip it, and what that does is it changes that outside exponent to be positive. Let me show you some examples. In example number five, it asks us to simplify. And so you could, on example number five A, distribute the negative three to every term in the top and every piece in the bottom. Or we can think about the rule that we just talked about. We can make that negative three a positive three by flipping everything that's on the inside. That means the two y will go to the top, the x to the fourth will go on the bottom. And again, what that does is it changes the outside exponent to positive. Then I can go through and I can use my rule where I want to make sure that I cube everything inside. I want to cube the two, I want to cube the y, and I want to cube the x to the fourth. 2 cubed, 2 times 2 times 2 is 8. I have y to the cubed in my numerator, and on my denominator I have x to the 12th power. Remember, when you raise to a power, you really multiply the exponents. I have no like bases. All my exponents are positive, so it looks like that's the final answer. Again, just one way of doing it, but it kind of helps go quickly when you can just reciprocate the inside and change that outside um, exponent to positive. Same thing with b. I notice that I have a negative 2 exponent on that quantity. I can make it a positive by flipping the inside. The 3 goes to the top, the 2 goes to the bottom, and I can square it now. My exponent is positive. That means I want to make sure I square everything at the top and everything at the bottom. I have a 3 squared over 2 squared. 3 squared is 9, 2 squared is 4, and I can say that my final answer, simplified as much as possible, would be 9 fourths. Let's try c couple different ways you can do C. Now I noticed in C that I didn't have a negative three there, so I don't really wanna flip it. If I do flip it, it's gonna make that three a negative three. What I did on this one is I took that three and I made sure that I distributed it to everything in the numerator and everything in the denominator. So I cubed my x to the negative three, I cubed my y to the fifth. Remember when you raise to a power, you're really multiplying the exponents, so that's how I got my x to the negative nine, and y to the 15th. I multiplied my exponents. I did the same thing with my denominator. I'm going to cube the 2, I'm going to cube the x, and I'm going to cube the y to the 5th. That gave me 2 cubed um, x cubed and y to the 15th. All right, now you notice that we have a couple different things going on here. I can really change this 2 cubed to an 8, make it simplify, and I noticed that this x to the 9, negative 9, was negative, so I'm actually going to bring it down to the denominator to make it positive. I already have an x cubed down there, but I'm also going to bring that x to the 9 down with it to make it positive. Did you also notice that you have a y to the 15th on the top and a y to the 15th on the bottom? Remember, if I have the same thing in the numerator and the same thing in the denominator, and they're just factors of, can I reduce those? That's why they were gone. Now, I have something still left in the, in the numerator. Isn't there an invisible one here as a coefficient? So I have one left at the top. That's important. Don't forget about that. Over, what do I have on the bottom? Well, I have this 2 cubed, which is 8. And then I had the x cubed and the x to the ninth that I brought down to the bottom. 
Now, since those are like bases, I should be able to smush those, combine those together. Now, remember when you multiply, what do you really do with the exponents? You add them, right? So in our final answer, you should have a one on the top and then an eight X to the 12th on the bottom. All my exponents are positive, all my like terms have been combined, and that's as simplified as we can make it. But make sure you have a one in the numerator because it means something very different if you end up having an eight X to the 12th instead of a one over eight X to the 12th, okay? All right, what I suggest you do now is take these three try it problems, pause the video, try them, work them all the way out until the very end, making sure that you have simplified as much as you can and make sure that you have positive exponents and let's see if your final answer matches mine. What I would also like you to do is make sure that you're practicing showing me all of your work. It's really important that I can see and follow what you're doing step by step so that I know how you got the answer, especially if we're submitting the, our work uh, for our exams. I want to be able to see what you're doing step by step by step so you can get your full credit. Okay. All right. Pause the video. Try these three. Come back to me and let's check our answers together. All right, on the first one, I saw that there was a negative exponent. I have a little red flag that says there is no such thing as negative exponents, so I'm going to make that positive first. I'm going to make that positive by dropping it down to the denominator. I have a 1 over 3 squared now, and then I know what 3 squared means. That means 3 multiplied twice, and so I ended up getting 1 ninth as my final answer. Did you? All right, looking at B, I'm going to do each piece separately. I'm going to do my coefficients together. So I noticed that negative 6 divided by 2 is negative 3. Um, I'm also going to take this x to the negative 2 and bring it down to my denominator and make it positive. And so I noticed here that I have an x cubed already down there. I brought that x squared already down there. And then what I did here is I took three y's from the top and three y's from the bottom. That left me with two y's on the bottom, a y squared. I'm not done yet because I have like terms that I can combine. I'm multiplying those, which means I'm really adding their exponents. So I have a negative 3 at the top. I have an x to the fifth on the denominator along with a y squared. All my exponents are positive. I've combined everything, and so it looks like that's the final answer. Hopefully you got the same thing as me. All right, how did you do 3? Hmm. A couple different things you could do. You could distribute the negative 3 exponent to everything. You can bring it to the 2, the a to the 4th, and the b to the negative 2, and then change things around if you wanted to, make them positive. Or what I did is I just flipped it. I noticed that I had this whole quantity over an invisible 1, and I noticed that my outside exponent was negative. And I remember that there's a reciprocal rule that says that I can flip all the stuff on the inside, which is going to make that exponent positive. Flipping doesn't change anything on the inside. It just makes your outside exponent positive. So the 2 goes down to the bottom, the a to the 4th goes down to the bottom, and the b to the negative 2 goes down to the bottom. The only thing that changes is this positive 3. And then you can start to distribute. Again, this is just one way. This is just what I thought of. There's other ways to do it, but we should still get the same final answer in the end. From here, I'm going to go ahead and make sure that I cube every piece in the denominator. I'm going to cube the 2, I'm going to cube the a to the 4th, and I'm going to cube the b to the negative 2 power. That gave me an 8, an a to the 12th, and a b to the negative 6 in my denominator. Remember, there's still a 1 in that numerator. The only thing I don't like about this is that this b to the negative 6 has a negative exponent, which doesn't make much sense to us in math, so we're going to make it positive by bringing it up to the top. When I bring it up to the top, my final answer is a b to the 6th over 8a to the 12th. You can still put the one there at the top if you'd like to. It's a coefficient, but we know that when it's not there, it's still there. It's just invisible, right? All right. Hopefully you were able to get those three try it problems. Make sure that you're practicing too by doing your homework and do as many problems as you need to to make sure that you're comfortable with all these different exponents rules because we're going to add to it here in a little bit.